We may be capable of transcendental experiences and may exist on metaphysical level, but that doesn't mean we need any less of a relationship with what is outside us. I guess that is what they mean by spiritual rather than religious. Ek Dream 1 Discourses, page 220, attempts to program people into thinking survival isn't that important. It tries to support this by relating to the material reality souls are in as a burden we are weighed down by. The next page tells people that laws of survival are just where you have to be in a physical body. How can what we are told outside of Ekankar about heavenly realms be misconceptions if it is truly orthodox are correctly believing? That is how Harold Klemp refers to the teachings of priests are those who lead rituals. A higher initiate of Ek drew attention to how the Americans kept Vietnamese isolated from each other in small cells, hoping to break them psychologically. One of them had already been tortured by the North Vietnamese. A man on the other side regained his will to live when he found a method to communicate with him by a wire shoved through a crack between cells. It seemed to the higher, the higher initiate that the former prisoners of war had a greater chance of worldly success than the veterans that weren't. Whatever field of work they found, they credited the discipline and self-purification they underwent by their ordeals. They are, there are other ways, and no one should bring such hardship upon oneself. The point is that beneficial learning may occur in almost any situation. Page 222 of the Ek Dream One Discourses tries to convince that nightmares and horrible inner experiences are a gift of the Dream Master. Doesn't this make it seem like this alleged Dream Master cast powerful curses on his followers? Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankel tells of a composer in a concentration camp who had a dream in February of 1945 that the war would end March 30th of that year. The dreamer slipped into his final unconsciousness with typhus on that day instead. Could an astral energy could an astral entity really kill a person as Harold Klemp teaches? The drug doctrines of Ekankar mentions how hard drugs like tobacco, alcohol, and medication open one to influences that might otherwise be resisted or play no conscious role. Drugs kill people, but I'll have to side with Islamic teaching of there being no ghouls or spirits that physically hurt people. Our dream studies without so-called experts, without so-called expert guidance, full of any more dangers? The next page teaches that Ekvidya shows future possibilities and how does one know what is a prophetic dream. Ekankar teaches that it takes effort and imagination. Doesn't that seem like it is personal philosophizing that mostly guides the Ekists rather than Ekankar? A spiritual view of a dream is a mental placement of it in that category of the use of knowledge of it for such a purpose.
how can one be receiving crucial information that one is to take for granted? Why develop a conviction that the spiritual leader of Akankar is the dream master using such poor communication if such a contradiction is in the same paragraph that Harold Klemp refers to as the word of Ek? The Ek Dream One Discourses by Harold Klemp, page 223, does not speak of the sunny side as optimism, but it refers to such as considering whoever Ekankar believers call the Dream Master as working on your behalf rather than to maintain his celebrity and salary. Dreams can warn of things, but I think they are ignoring that. The messages are often transformed versions of personal communication personal conceptions that don't ring true, soul and spirit can become as one. To keep our true being the reality of ourselves that transcends the material world in agreement with itself is a very important thing to strive for. I would agree with Harold Klemp that people should act as if they've already realized the truth about God but not in the sense of being gods right now. This is really what the Ekmasters are treated as, lesser gods. That is really how the Ekmasters are treated as lesser gods. Reality is not whatever we think it is, and it is important what we choose to believe, a practice of the presence of God and other spiritual exercises can be done in any place, and any situation. Achila, our Ekankar initiate, kept a dream journal, but found few entries in years. She started to record occurrences that she thought were significant in there too. I've kept as detailed of a spiritual journal as I deemed reasonable for years. She started to let her defenses down, and... It helped her to change how she reacted towards others and herself. The point isn't made in Ekankar, but it is more important to strive for orthopraxy, our correct action, than for experiences. Ekankar tells people they can receive the full light and sound of God. Wouldn't you agree that the idea of receiving the full light of the light or the full sound of the sound severely limits God to what his creations are. This must be true, even if you could consider these as names of God. We can be prepared to manifest even more. We can climb the mountain of God beyond what we have been prepared to, if God so wills. Our or will any of the so-called Ekmasters ever be at the top of the mountain? It is certainly so, according to the minds of their worshippers. Akankar teaches to give them respect, but not worship. Aside from those who haven't decided to do otherwise, I don't see how the phrase can be anything but contradictory nonsense. I want to hear the sound current spiritual exercise. The 22nd month in Ekankar has its spiritual exercise of Ek, starting off by saying, I want to hear the sound current, in silence, then drifting off to sleep, listening to all the sounds in the room. This is called the sound technique, and it allegedly makes people notice of, of celestial sounds beyond that. Some people have claimed to have more vivid, uh, to have more dreams where sound was noticed when doing such things. Are we experiencing ek, our divine light, and sound by such methods, or is it the usual stimulus with the occasional psychedelic phenomenon? My final practice of this rite was between 1.20 and 5.12 a.m. On Wednesday, the 31st of December, 2009.
2014, are the eighth through tenth hour of the night of the ninth month, uh, the ninth day of the third month of 1436. For a week or so, frivolous songs would get stuck in my head as I did the sound technique. That didn't happen that Wednesday night. I heard wind blow through the grass as I went to sleep. I saw the moon rise shallowly over nine thrones. A vampire was seated in each of these. Things grew very dark. Then I saw two rainbow-colored serpents wrap around each other and me. A peacock stood by making different pitch sounds as they changed colors. The peacock made higher pitch sounds as the colors tended more towards red and lower pitch sounds as the colors tended more towards violet. Mermen and mermaids swam in the nearby sea. A human became a wolf, and I found with it till I could bind it. A the werewolf became complacent as I carried it to an altar that 56 people were building. I separated the two snakes and sat them down. They became plainly colored, and the peacock went away. I sat the lycanthrope. I sat the lycanthrope upon the altar and watched it turn into the Princess of Cups. She was at an age that she was about to hit puberty. R had already become an adolescent, but didn't yet look like a woman. The sun rose low over eleven thrones, each with a vampire in it. She quickly aged from about ten to twelve, where she looked around forty-six. Oh, she quickly aged from ten to twelve to where she looked around forty-six years old. I carefully handed her the Goetia Sigilia for the period of Scorpio are numbers 51 through 56. Without touching her. These were in the form of a golden coin, a green and red coin, an orange coin, a red coin, a tin coin, and another red and green coin. I picked up a tortoise shell lyre and played a tune upon it. I chanted, danced, and performed other arts. A wreath was placed upon my head, a dragon circles round her, breathing sparks upon the altar. I knew not how to fight, because she was not bound. I would, uh, I would stop on occasion to do something that was obviously religious. I would notice her waving at me from afar when I took a break. As the scene faded, the tortoise liar turned into a giant tortoise that I rose into the sunset. I heard crickets. I continued to hear them as I woke up. I woke up with my heart racing. I felt sped up for a while. After waking, I was extraordinarily calm and content. I felt fully rested despite lacking some sleep, as per my usual requirements. The blonde stranger in the creek might give you uh, insight as to what some of that uh, meant. And no, I did not uh, encounter her as a child, but some of the meaning of that I will keep to myself, unless she gives me uh, permission to uh, share. Um, Dream Interpretation The crickets can be seen as a symbol of protection and a prediction of movement. I wish to protect the Princess of Cups, but can predict some of her future to a degree that others don't seem to be able to. The tortoise is as the constellation Lyra, which is the first decant 
of Sagittarius. The mercurial expression of this Deccan is seen as work, being the three of discs. There is still work to be done. As a Venusian Deccan, it means initiate, our devotee. I must go on my way, not compromising my life as devotee to God, and should go on to gain further spiritual initiations by experiencing our learning. The lyre is a symbol of armor, as well as the devotional and healing side of music. I must maintain my spiritual defenses in relation to her and other manners. I should perform my spiritual arts for the benefit of myself and others. The dragon is as Draco, or the second Deccan of Libra, in its lunar mode as Debak, or the Seven of Cups. The merfolk and vampires can be seen as the saturnal guise, as self-sufficiency. Dragons guard treasure, and princesses in mythology. The Arcadian apples that distracted Atalanta in the myth are also represented here. The dragon represents what is holding her back from winning the race. The sound of the sea is said in Ekankar to be a sign of being on the astral plane, which is listed as the second plane and first heaven. If true, this would imply that it was an experience of emotions. The wreath is as Corona Australis, or the southern crown. This is as the two of swords sees its Venusian meaning as peace with her, waving at me, and witnessing to the effects of my spirituality. This constellation's solar meaning, our achievement, is seen in that I conveyed what was necessary. And, you know, she's admitted that uh, different times in different ways, and apparently recently. Um, the altar is as the constellation Aura, as the Ten of Swords. There are myths of the building of an altar to worship God by those treated as lesser gods and goddesses. Its solar title, or ruin, is seen in the 56 that builds it, and the fact that it seems to be a symbol of a potential for future destruction. I have shared the 56 explicit verses of love by and for God that are found in al Quran with her. I am almost certain that I have shared my views upon the 11 verses of this subject from the Bible as well. This card's solar title as oppression can be seen how she has been scapegoated despite people being partially or just as responsible for her bad behavior or being guilty of similar misdeeds themselves. This can also represent people discouraging her in regard to each of those 56 messages for this age. There are 56 cards of the Minor Arcana in the Tarot, and most lives have seen some hardship in each of these categories. The Uranian symbolism of this card as responsibility or duty is seen in my handing over of the talismans, representing the defeat of the evils and bad things attributed to Gamori, Orobos, Murmur, Tamio, Alokes, and Baalam. My duty was only to convey ways to deal with these categories of life, and that which is referenced by the number 56. If one starts the new year at the vernal equinox and divides it into 72 or 73 portions, this dream was in portion number 56. The peacock is as the constellation Favo. The symbolic role here is as the Paan. The is as the Paan. It sang along with the colors and the bliss that I felt. This constellation also represents immortality. Are we not familiar in a way as souls? I was as 
Ophiuchus, or the first decant of Scorpio. This is the Nine of Swords in the Tarot. Its Martian symbolism is as the cruelty of the dragon towards me and the behavior of the 56 towards her. Its Venusian title is resourceful, and that was seen in the resources that I shared with her. The werewolf I picked up was as the constellation Lupus, or the wild beast. Its docile nature after the fight was as the jovial title of the Eight of Cups, as indolence. Its Plutonian title, R, Make Haste, was seen in how quickly the Princess of Cups aged upon the altar. From years before I met her to when I met her, to the point where most of her potential life span is gone. Eating rumbly in the tumbly. I don't know if you hear that, but I'm rumbling about here. Um... <laughs> The snakes were, as the constellation Serpens, are the constellation Serpens Caput and Serpens Cauda. This is as the first decant of Libra and the Six of Cups. Its solar symbolism is its title, Pleasure. That was seen in the pleasures I experienced. Its lunar title is Ethics. That was represented as its patterns. These two snakes and me was as a caduceus. Caducus. Caducus. Okay. Um. The whole of the experiences in the dream were as medicine to me. The other thing, uh, catechus represents is business. It may be that is something left from me that is to sell people on. Something left from me to sell people on. That, uh, I don't know what that was. Um, the low dragging of the sun and moon is as the myth of the heels of the sun and moon connected with Scorpio. It was the eleventh day, starting with the winter solstice. The sighting of the crescent moon rendered it the ninth night of the month. The thrones were those numbers. The lowness is as the idea that a pursuer is hot on the heels. The twentieth numbered trump. Of the tarot is judgment, our on, and having a system of judgment that is relevant to this era is central to the messages that I convey. The sound of wind is said in Ekankar theology to be the sound of the Alak Lok, invisible sphere, our sixth, our sixth plane. It is listed as the seventh named one, as the Etheric plane is listed as a plane, rather than being a higher area of the mental, as it is described. If the word of the plane is Shanti, that would imply the experiences are of bringing peace. Workbook activities. The Ek Dream 1 Discourses by Harold Klepp has workbook activity 2, 10, 1. On pages 226 and 227, I like useful gifts that make my life go easier, but I don't believe Harold Clem offers many to people. Things that come with a paid membership or by buying other things from the Ekinkar Corporation can hardly be considered gifts. Fun gifts can inspire. I am grateful to God instead. That keeps me finding more to be grateful for. I am not writing a thank you letter to Harold Clem. Nor will I write any future Mahata thanking him for what I do or what God does for me beyond that. The next workbook activity is on the following page. Ekankar considers a person 
as graduating from a year of study when they renew their membership. The practitioner has to wonder whether or not they are finding out the cause of the effects they are seeing the results of wishful thinking. Whether or not they're finding out the cause of the effects they're seeing, or are they seeing the results of wishful thinking? Okay. I don't feel like imagining that I am side by side with Harold Clint in his dream he considered to be of a research room in Param Akshar. I can think of no gift I discovered beyond specific meanings and applications that I figured out. I will work out some of those in different ways as time goes by. Workbook Activity 2, 10, 3 is on page 229 of the Extreme 1 Discourses by Harold Clemp. I think almost anyone would like to spend more time viewing strong, free, and not held back by limits. I would strongly discourage anyone asking a Mahanta who is not physically present about these traits. Isn't the idea of being limitless delusions of grandeur for a creation? The next workbook activity is on the following page. The woman in the story about a dream within a dream about the world ending was about looking on the bright side as she decided to just watch it rather than worry and resist. My dreams lately have been hidden except for shadows and light. Whether a dream or experience is from ourselves, one of the devils, or even God, I don't think it makes sense to even try to pretend that everything is a gift of love. Don't you think you could convince yourself that looking on the bright side of life is to consider your dreams or experiences as out of your control and controlled by another? I can't convince myself that it is always positive are even the best thing. Some control of other experiences, psychic or otherwise, must be in ways not in a way pleasing to God. Workbook Activity 2, 10, 5 is on page 231 of the Dream 1 Discourses by Harold Clemp. Aside from saying, Phew! Few spiritual exercises of Eck come with a message to do them as often as you like. I was never the sort of person to pretend as if I had my own divinity. I don't recommend that. I do recommend acting as if you have realized the truth about God, instead of the sense some speak of when they speak of being God-realized. I believe that self-realization requires knowing. You are a separate. You are separate. And no one is ever truly one with God or otherwise loses their individuality. I've tried to act with consciousness of the reality of God enough that I notice no change, feeling or otherwise. This page recommends it for an hour. The next page has the following activity. I can look back on the next few days to see if I made any progress, but won't ask some shower of the way to possess me and draw attention to things. It can be a great idea to put experiences from the day as well as dreams in a spiritual journal. The following page has another activity. This is to examine your emotions as to why you would want to hear sound. The implication is that of a theophany, but is almost always an epiphany of a psychedelic or even ordinary sort. One is asked to draw or otherwise record what you have come to understand. As the discourses progress, the urging to worship the one they call Mahanta increases. Harold Clint often writes or speaks about himself in the second or third person narrative in order to seem less like a megalomaniac. The final workbook activity of Lesson 10 of the Ectorine 1 Discourses by Herbert Clint is on pages 234 and 235. I noticed no effect of sound or sound upon my dreams that wasn't there to begin with. 
Sound is usually just an enhancement of what was there, or even just noticing something in contemplation. The sound the women mentioned that did the sound technique before it ended up in the discourse heard is on, according to Ekankar cosmology charts, one lesson is to gain understanding that is more than just repeating a list. One should pay attention to the states in meditation when you are hypnogogic and sleep. Remember to go at yourself.